right, here we have a circle. And I want you to observe that the angle at the center, which is the red angle, is 140. And the angle at the circumference, which is the purple part of the circle, is 70. Notice what happens when I move the angle at the center at the circumference hmm you see anything changing all right so let's just try to discuss the relationship between the angle at the center the 140 with the angle at the circumference the 70 what can you do to 140 to get 70 well you could divide it by 2 so that is one of the first or uh, one of the first theorems in circles that the angle at the center is two times the angle at the circumference and if you want you could look at it differently the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center so let's change it to see a few more examples let's try 100 at the center Notice that the angle at the circumference is half 100, which is 50. And it, no matter how you want to look, as long as it is at the center, it's going to be two times the angle at the circumference. And notice that they share a common starting point here and a common ending point there. So it's almost as if they're standing on the same arc. So look. I will put it to another number. An easy one. Let's try 150. Half of 150 is 75. So see? The angle at the circumference is 75. There's a special case of this. It's this one. Look at the diameter. The diameter is 180 degrees measures 180 degrees and it is this red line right so notice that the angle at the circumference is half of 180 which is 90 there's another way we can look at this angles formed from the diameter to touch the circumference is always a right angle so it doesn't matter how it won't turn if it won't turn to the side like this upside down or right around once it's on the diameter and the angle is at the circumference this angle at the circumference will always be a right angle So here we have a circle and it is red and inside the circle we can see this purple line which is called the cord notice how the cord looks and we see some angles angle i and angle g formed at the circumference of the circle i want you to look carefully at angles i and g and see if there is some pattern or some relationship as I move them observe the changes if there are any what do you notice about angle I and angle G well hopefully you see that they stay the same or they are the same so this is what we describe them as angles standing on the same chord which is the purple line but they're formed at the circumference which is the red circle they are equal so angles subtended at the circumference from the same chord are equal so see angle i is 57 angle g is also 57 let's move this chord to see what happens to the angles notice that they stay the same 68 86 and 86 
let's change it 53 and 53 let's change it again yeah 23 and 23 right so see angles standing on the same chord but formed at the circumference are equal so another way we can express this is saying that angles in the same segment are equal so if you look at it angle i is in the same segment as angle g and when i talk about segment i'm talking about that part of the circle that is formed between the arc and the chord so the purple line and the top portion of the circle right so notice that i'm not going below the purple line so i'm in this segment segment up here notice i'm not going below the purple line with g they're in the same segment up here so angles in the same segment are equal let's look at another theorem this one what do you notice about this one particularly the shape what shape is inside the circle well if you say a four-sided figure which is a quadrilateral then you are perfectly correct and notice that all the corners of the quadrilateral all of them are touching the circumference of the circle interestingly there's a relationship between the opposite angles let's try to use some easy numbers at first so that you can see all right so this one should be nice all right look at angle n in relation to angle j if you add both of them together how much will you get 80 plus 100 that's 180 and if you add 86 right here with this 94 right here how much do you get may i give you two seconds for open your calculator and i see how much you get well you're supposed to get 180 right so this is what we call a cyclic quadrilateral pretty much it's a circle and a rectangle and a quadrilateral a quadrilateral inside a circle so when you have a quadrilateral inside a circle and all the corners are touching the circumference you call it a cyclic quadrilateral and the opposite angles in the cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary which means they add to 180 so it doesn't matter how this quadrilateral one look the opposite side supposed to the opposite angle supposed to add to 180 so 122 right here so plus 58 right here so should add up to 180 this 98 or that 88 up there so plus this 92 supposed to add up to 180 and if i change it go around so and change it come around so as long as the angles are opposite angles inside the cyclic quadrilateral they're going to add up to 180 and then no matter how small it wants small or how huge it wants to be once it is a cyclic quadrilateral which means it's a quadrilateral inside a circle and all the corners are touching the circumference then opposite angles add to 100 